What's up everybody? It's Tim Hepworth here with Thursday Night Live Fly Tying and Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and I am here to bring you another quick tie. We're going to be working on this episode on a rough water caddis. This is coming out of episode 18 of season 4. Um, first off, I'd like you to like and subscribe to this video because I want to know that you are here. I want to, uh, to yeah, leave some feedback on these quick ties if you like them, if you don't like them, or what we should do different. Or don't give us anything, that's fine too, just say you're here. Um, don't forget to hit that little bell icon. That'll let you know every time we have a new video come out as well. Don't forget, guys, we're coming up on our final episode. And our final episode has some pretty cool stuff going on. Every $5 donation that you put in on, on our website gets you an entry into the mass giveaways that happen at the end. And there are some big prizes. Legit thousands of dollars worth of prizes coming from our sponsors. So don't forget, um, head over to our website. It's, it's live now. You can start doing that. Whether you do one donation of $5 or 100 of them, it's up to you. Gets you entries in. All right, I'm tying out of my Thursday Night Live Fly Tank Season 4 kit. If you don't already have one of these or you would like one, you can head over to our website at www.flyfishingboarriver.com backslash TNLS4 and you can pick yours up today. All right, so like I said before, episode 18. Only a couple more left here, guys. Let's head on over to the vice and get started. So tonight I'm going to be tying with an olive. Um, this is a UTC 70 denier. Okay, we're tying on a size, uh, this is a size 14 dry fly hook. So it's a, it's not a super big one, but it's uh, it's not so small that it's too hard to do these flies on. So let's start off just behind the eye. We're gonna lay down a nice thread base. And I wanna do it all the way back to the edge of the bend. And then I'm gonna bring it back forward, okay? I wanna leave myself a full eye length space back from the eye. As we're going to be tying in some deer hair here, it makes our life a little bit easier to work with when we got some space up at the eye. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we need to go stack some deer hair. So on your kit, you got this uh, natural colored deer hair. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off about an eighth of a pencil width. So it's really not much. If you over trim too much off, that is totally fine too, because we can just pick some out after. But what I want to do is once I've trimmed it off, I'm going to try to get all the fuzzies out from underneath. And then I'm going to head on over to my stacker and I'm going to stack these up. Okay. Get it in your hair stacker. Wrap it a few times on the table. And when I pull this off, I want to pull it off so that the base of the stacker is pointed back. And just like that, you can see all those beautifully stacked fibers. I'm going to grab them. Give it another little flick. Make sure I don't have any fuzz on the underside. Okay. Now, what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly grab my scissors and square off the butts so they're square like this, okay? Now, I know it's a lot of moving with the hands back and forth, but keep those in your fingers and transfer them back to the other hand. We're gonna measure a tail that's roughly half the overall hook shank in length off the back, okay? So once I have that there and I figure I've got the tail that I want, now I'm gonna let go. Remember where my thread is, my thread is still up at the eye, okay? This is important. So I'm going to grab this again, reposition my fingers so that I can hold this deer hair right on top of the hook shank. Now I'm going to go for me. I'm going to do a clockwise spin as I am a left-handed tire. If you are a right-handed tire, you're going to go counterclockwise. That's going to cause my thread to jump rearward and grab that hair. I'm going to take a wrap. I'm going to pull it tight. You're going to see that hair start to flare a bit. I'm going to take a couple more. Okay. Now, while I'm right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some open wraps as I lift the hair off of the hook shank itself, I'm gonna do some open spiral wraps all the way back to the edge of the hook bend, okay? Now I can give a little tug back there, but I don't wanna pull too hard and flare that tail too big, but just a little bit of a flare is a good thing, okay? Now you can see if I were to bring my thread down, that's right about at the, kind of at that barb, that's where we wanna be, okay? So now all I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna start taking some thread wraps forward, not really pulling down any harder, because I want that little bit of a chubbier underbody. But once I get up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some thread wraps through the butts. So I'm gonna pull some of the butts back, take a thread wrap and draw tension back down the fly. Do that again, pull the rest of them up, get a few thread wraps right in front of the whole pattern, like so. It's gonna kind of prop that up. You're gonna have some spare ones that are kind of hanging out. Don't worry about those. We will get those with the cauterizer or you can trim them out. Okay, so I'll come in here and just get rid of a few of those ones that aren't where I want them to be. 
And then I'm gonna drive a few more thread wraps up underneath that so it stands up nice. And now that it's right here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a head on it. Not a, not a large one. I'm gonna come in at an angle and trim these off. And I'll clean up any of these other spare guys. Just make sure that all of the hair is even up at the top. There we go. That's our head of this fly, okay? We're gonna leave that like so. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of thread here to work with, couple wraps. And now guys, we're gonna start this process. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna tie in our hackle feather. So we're gonna do this almost as if we were tying a woolly bugger, except, you know, we we're gonna work our, our hackle one direction and we're gonna use our thread to counter wrap it back up and to keep it good and secure so we don't lose it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my hackle, okay? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take the fuzzies off the bottom. I'm then gonna pull down a couple of fibers so I can kind of see them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little triangle into this. So I'm gonna come in here, trim a few of those, go to the other side, trim a couple more. And what I'm left with is that little triangle section at the bottom. Okay, you can see it like so, little, little triangle. I'm gonna use that to tie this in and I wanna orientate it so the underside of the hackle is pointed back down the fly. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna tie this in. And the reason I did that little triangle piece is because that allows me to bite into some of those, um, the barbs that I've left on there. And it's a lot less likely that I'm gonna lose them. And that's that the hackle is gonna pull out. So I still got that little bit of stem you can see hanging out there. So I'm gonna go in there and trim that out. Okay. Now you kinda wanna put a little bend in this hackle just to kinda keep it out of the way because we're gonna be working in front of it now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our dry fly dubbing, okay? We're gonna tie it in a, in a tan today, match the naturals, whatever is in your area, and whatever's hatching, okay? So, but uh, we wanna grab just the tiniest wisp, okay? So we're gonna make this a really thin dubbing noodle. So don't overdo it on the noodle because we don't want this super, super bulky um, body of this fly because we've already built it up a little bit with the hair. I'm just gonna make a really thin noodle. We're gonna make this to be about two and a half inches long. And we're gonna wrap this back down the fly to the tail. Okay, once I've got this kind of in, this is basically just to color the body. We don't wanna to have too much on here. So I'm gonna pull that hackle kind of out of the way, make a couple wraps till my dubbing starts making contact. And then I'm just gonna do a nice touching wraps down the body all the way to the tail. Once I get there, if I have any left over, I'll just pull it off my thread, finish a wrap, okay. Now I'm gonna leave my thread right there. We're gonna work our way back down the pattern <coughs> with this hackle. Important thing here, we're gonna do a full wrap all the way around to start, okay? All the way around, and then I can start doing my open spirals, okay? Evenly spaced open spirals back down the body. We wanna put a, a good amount of hackle on this fly because it's called a rough water caddis for a reason. All this extra hackle fiber here is gonna help this stay afloat in the water. Once I've got all the way to the back, I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna grab it with my thread. Make sure that that is secure. And now I'm gonna use my thread and start winding it forward, okay? So you can see how I'm kind of going in at an angle, working it through those hackles so that I don't pin a bunch down. And I'm going all the way back up to right here. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, you can either whip finish or you can use a, a half hitch tool. And I'm gonna finish this off on the front side of that deer hair. So I'm gonna do a couple of wraps, put the hole over the hook eye, do it again, pull that tight. Go ahead and add some resin if you'd like, if you feel the need. I'm gonna trim my thread out. And now by bringing that thread back up over top of all that hackle, what that does is it actually secures it. So it's not, if a fish bites this, maybe we'll get a couple of, fly, a couple of fish out of this without this fly just falling apart. Now let's come in here and we're gonna trim out that hackle at the back end, whatever we had left, like so. And now the next most important piece of this fly sometimes get missed. Some people like to fish this as is. 
But the problem with this is this is meant to sit in the surface film. And the only way for you to see the underbody and the color of that tan dubbing we put in is we're actually going to trim off all that bottom hair. So this is going to sit flat on the water surface. The hook itself under the water is going to orientate it for you because that's where the weight is. And it's going to sit right on the surface film. So let's come in here and let's trim out right down to the bed all that fiber all that hook hackle fiber sorry we get a good look at it from the underside if it doesn't look super flat then we're going to do just a little bit more trimming just like that now what you see there guys flat on the bottom like so so that's going to sit in the surface film all the ends of those hairs we just trimmed still look nice and buggy we got lots of hackle on top this sucker is going to float really well this is the rough water caddis guys Keep a few of these in your box. I promise you won't be disappointed. All right, everybody. Again, this is Tim Hepworth here with Thursday Night Live Fly Tying and Fly Fishing Over Outfitters. Please like and subscribe to this video. Until next week, see you then.